Many people come here to do hiking at the national park, but the actual real top reason why people come here is to eat eel. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weedens with Migrationology.com in Jeonju, South Korea. For the past two weeks, Ying and I have been staying at a hotel called Benikea, which is a classic hotel located right in the center of Jeonju within a shopping district. But during our visit here, I also really wanted to experience staying in a traditional Korean Hanok homestay. And so today we're taking a day trip to a place called Gochang. But then when we come back later this afternoon, we are gonna check into a Korean homestay hanok. Here's the table where I've been editing videos. I think we got everything, we are moving on. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> That was about an hour and a half drive from Jeonju, and we have just arrived to Sungunsan Provincial Park. Another, looks like another beautiful mountain park, and there's also a temple here. There's an entire fleet of tour buses here. The older people are hiking also. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love about Korean national parks is that there are always snacks and restaurants lining the entrance of them and so we have just stopped for a snack. She's roasting up some, some um, chestnuts and these are some roasted ginkgo nuts. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. It has a really nice roasted fire flavor to it. And they're kind of like smooth but starchy at the same time. Oh, you gotta have some silkworms. You can smell those. That is an undeniable smell. Mm. I think we're just sampling her entire shop. Fantastic. Oh, come some of Raspberry. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna save this raspberry until after I eat some of the silkworms. Poke a few of these silkworms. Silkworms are a very popular snack in Korea, and you can smell them way before you can see them. Mm. But they're really good. They're kind of like, kind of has the texture of fish eggs or like scrambled eggs, but with a little like um, kind of chewy encasing. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. They are a very good healthy protein snack. Auntie has just mentioned, reassured me. Mm, they are good. And they actually, they actually have a, a strong aroma, but the taste is not that strong. Okay, I'm gonna chase it with that raspberry. Mmm, mmm. Oh, the combination. Raspberry and silkworm all in one bite. We just arrived at the temple. Luckily, I had lots of energy from snacking on all those silkworms walking here. Uh, but this is a, another big temple complex with surrounded by lush green mountains. And today it's very busy. Lots and lots of hikers are out and Korean tour groups. There was a mosquito or bug that just flew into my sunglasses. 
Many people come here to do hiking at the national park, but the actual real top reason why people come here is to eat eel. And lining the road leading up to the national park, there are just an abundance of different eel restaurants. And so almost everyone who goes hiking, then after their hike, just to build their hunger, comes to eat eels. This restaurant is called Shindok, and it sort of has a, a log cabin feel to it. One of the side snack dishes that they have brought out these are fried eel bones. I think that's the center bone. Mm. Oh yeah. That is completely crispy all the way through. You can taste the fried oil flavor to it as well. That tastes kind of like fried skin because of that fatty eel which is deep fried in the skin. Thank you. The natural habitat for eels, or for these types of eels, is in brackish water where the seawater is mixing with fresh water. And so this area is very well known for its eels. We got two different types. One of them, they're both grilled, but one of them is covered or basted in a sauce, and the other is just with salt. So I'm gonna start with a leaf of lettuce. You take the piece of eel, Oh, you can see that oily, beautiful skin, and it's sort of, um, it's sort of like shriveled up. And what you do first is dip it into a little bit of the wasabi sauce, then stick it into the lettuce wrap. Next is a little bit of ginger, and then finally some of these marinated chives, and then a little bit of the bean paste, and that is a complete eel bite. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that is amazing. That eel is so buttery creamy. And I love it complemented with that ginger. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, I love it. And it's boneless. So you just get that pure, like rich, oily, buttery eel. Oh, wow. That is a, a bite to savor. And almost everyone who eats eel also has raspberry wine. This area is very famous for raspberry wine. So Chino and I are gonna have a, a shot of raspberry wine. Cheers, man. Mm. Oh yeah, that's nice. It tastes very similar to a grape wine, but with a little more of a sweet, fruity taste. Okay, for my next bite, I'm gonna go le lettuce, and I'm gonna also grab one of the perilla leaves, do a little stacking. This one I'm gonna go for the sauce eel. Oh, that sauce is kind of sticky. And place this right in the center. For this one I'm gonna add a raw, whoa, that is a pretty significant half a clove of garlic going for it. And I'm going ginger as well. That ginger was so good on that first bite that I can't resist. Okay, I think that's uh, good enough for one bite right there. Mm -hmm. mm. That is that same wonderful, wonderful eel. Kind of tastes like a like a barbecue sauce. It's a little bit tangy and a little bit smoky. One of the banchan side dishes that we got is this fermented fish, and you can really smell that. So I'm gonna taste a little bit. I think it should be pretty salty, so I'm just gonna have a little piece of it to taste it first. They have whole little fish in here, which are, they do look pretty fermented. They do smell pretty fermented. Oh yeah, that smells exactly like in Thai pala, which is the fermented fish sauce and fermented fish. Mm. Oh yeah. That definitely has some age to it. Mm. Oh, that tastes like spinach, but kind of marinated in a in the fermented bean paste. I think I'm just loving this eel. It's so good, and I really love just the salted one, that pure eel. 
dip into the wasabi. That, that fat and that skin and that like roasted oil flavor is incredible. What is most striking to me about this eel is the complement of that ginger. It is such an unbelievable complement. I'm gonna add quite a bit of ginger to this bite. The ginger is so, so mild, but so, it works so well with the, the eel because the eel is so fatty and then the ginger gives it like a really crisp, refreshing taste and texture. Dip it into that bean paste. Oh, that's too much bean paste. And then on top. But it's really, the garlic is just, I just love garlic, but it's really all about the ginger with the complement of that eel. Oh, that ginger. We're down to the tail here, and the tail is supposed to be the best part, the, the delicacy of the eel. Oh, and it is so, so sticky and so oily that it's stuck to this hot plate. We got the rice kind of at the end of our meal, so I'm gonna eat this with the rice this time. With some rice. I think the tail might have a little bit more of like a, a bitter taste to it, but it's so, so creamy and so fatty. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Wow. We just finished with that eel meal. That was incredibly good. I loved it. After lunch, we took a little drive over to Fushiko Beach. It's very windy. <laughs> Right along the beach is the Gusipo Seawater Spa. So Chino is checking us in and we're gonna experience some kind of Korean traditional seawater spa right now. <laughs> we have checked into the seawater spa and I have kind of some inmate clothing going on. Uh, but we have a little private room here and it's like a steam room but it's all seawater which is being heated. And it's really, really hot seawater so you can't even go in it. But you just, you just soak your towel in there and then you massage yourself with the hot seawater towel. It is really steamy though. I don't think this cannot be good for my camera. Soak your towel. Oh, that's hot. That's boiling hot. And then, ooh. And then you kind of massage yourself with this. This is a flaming, a flaming towel. I'm traveling on my back a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's so hot. <laughs> you don't see any young people at a traditional spa like this, mostly elderly people. So it's a real traditional part of Korean culture that is dying out. So it's very fun to experience and get a taste for the Korean spa culture. And I actually feel fantastic afterwards. <laughs> my skin is so soft. Because of the hot water, it's supposed to improve your blood circulation. We made it back to Jeonju and we got dropped off in the Hanok village. We're, we're walking now to our new homestay. Dukmanje. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, duck manje, that's what the one, okay. Oh, I'm kind of stuck getting through the door. <laughs> okay, I made it inside. Um, this is a traditional style Korean room, and it's just a floor, and then all the blankets are over here, and so you 
when you sleep, you lay out all the blankets. And we do have a room with a private bathroom as well. So, at the back here. Bathroom is simple, but everything you need. We even have a TV and a fridge. And this is the little welcome area. We only came here for a few minutes to drop off our bags and we are on our way to dinner now. We killed the fish here. We have come to a famous place called Chon E Shupo. And this is kind of a, a hangout spot. People come here to have drinks and then also to have kind of bar snacks. And up at the front of the restaurant outside, you can see them grilling the dried fish, which is what we're gonna sample, what we're gonna snack on, and we're gonna hang out here for a little while. They have a couple of different snacks here, but the most famous snack is an entire dried pollock, which is then grilled over charcoal. And they give it to you the entire thing. It looks purely crispified. Yeah, sure. We're gonna break it all up. It's like an entire fish, dried fish chip. like sawdust or, or like a cereal almost it's so crispy this is the sauce a special sauce with sesame seeds and I can see chilies in there and it's like a thick kind of sauce Oh, that's, that's dry because it's really dry and then dried out from the grill. But it's a wonderful, crispy, salty snack. Mm. And then the contrast is the dry, crispy fish. But then with the kind of sweet, salty, and, and uh, sesame-filled sauce. It tastes kind of like an oyster sauce, but with sesame seeds and chilies in it. Mm. And then we also got a dried squid, and this is an armored squid, one that I saw at the market a few days ago. That's very leathery. This is something you gotta chew for a long time. <laughs> This fish is a fantastic snack. It's so dry and so crispy that it's almost like a wafer. Mm. Just like just like pure dryness. Those snacks were extremely addictive. Especially the, both, actually both the squid and the fish, I think they were equally addictive. Both had their own textures and that was a, that's a great little spot in Junchu. Next stop, we decided to have a little fried chicken at a place called Gyochon. I have a personal pair of tongs to grab all the fried chicken. I don't know if I've ever seen so much fried chicken for four people in my life. We have two full plates of fried chicken. And this one, you can just smell the garlic coming off of this chicken. I'm gonna grab a, a drumstick with the spicy garlic sauce all over it. Oh, that is good. And then it has a little bit of a like chili garlic glaze taste to it, but it's really juicy chicken. And really crispy on the outside. This is the most civilized way of eating chicken that I've seen. You, you use the tongs and you break off the chicken. And then you, you use your fork to pick up the chicken. I'm gonna try this piece of chicken next. I think this one is just plain. And is it boneless or is there a bone in there? Oh yeah, there's a bone in there. For our final stop this evening, we are at the Pune Moon Gate, which is the the historical gate right in the heart of Junchu. And every Friday and Saturday night, 
they have a light show. And so we're here to see the light show with lots of other people. I just made it back to the hotel and we have set up our bed. Oh, hello, Ying. Hello. <laughs> On the ground here. Today has been a fantastic day. That eel in particular was just mind blowing, but also dinner and the dried pollock was also really good. I'm gonna end the video for today right now. Thank you all very much for watching today's video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also make sure you leave a comment below and subscribe for many, many more future food and travel videos. And I will see you on the next video. Can you see me? Oh, hello, Ying. Hello. <laughs> hello. Ying is so comfortable. <laughs>